Kinnery, just to get started, tell, tell me a little bit about what, you're, what you do right now. So I'm the founder of a nonprofit called Health in Harmony that I started actually pretty sh- not that long after I was at Reed. And um, I, uh, it does rainforest conservation and healthcare. So mm. I became a doctor to get to this, this path after Reed, um, but I don't exactly practice medicine anymore. I decided that uh, you did for many years in Indonesia, but I decided that um, there were many, many people who were taking care of patients. There were very few physicians who were taking care of the planet. Yeah, so I really see human and environmental health as inextricably intertwined. That there's that without a healthy planet, you can't have healthy people, and without healthy people, you can't have a healthy ecosystem. One of the main drivers of rainforest loss um, among indigenous and traditional communities is, is actually that they need to log the forest to get cash to pay for health care, even when they love the forest and want to protect it. These communities are guardians of 80% of the remaining uh, natural forest in the world. And we just, 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 know, we just don't have a question. We have to honor them for and support them, their community determined uh, solutions. I call it radical listening. So basically I feel like what I do is honor and support those communities and try to bring resources back to them. Wow. And in return, they give incredible gifts to the world. Where where, where did this start? So while I was at Reed, I took a year off and went to Borneo. And when I was in Borneo, I'm spending an entire year deep in the rainforest alone. All day, every day, we were alone from morning until night. It was like being on a silent retreat for a year, right? Like it was profound and intense. But the problem was the forest was disappearing around me. Hmm. You could just hear these enormous giant rainforest trees, like 22 story tall trees. I mean, some of the biggest trees in the world giant 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 tree and when they fall it's like a little earthquake and i just thought well here i am studying orangutans but even if i were to do my phd like by the time i'd be done with my phd there probably wouldn't even be any orangutans left like what am i doing (laughs) but i start i got to know a lot of the so we had um some field assistants who i would meet with on alternating days for about 15 minutes and then often in the evening um, for who came from the local community. So about 10 people and um, all men. Uh, and they, um, they told me, they just, you know, I just listened to them. I talked to them and listened to them and they told me about their lives. And mm. what they said was, if we don't have access, you know, we, we cut down trees to, mostly to pay for healthcare Uh. because without that, what are we going to do? You know, and that and many other things over time Uh really helped me understand this interlinkage between human and environmental health. Uh And so I decided to go to medical school. So, so now tell me what the workers who are cutting down the trees you said they didn't want to be doing that. Yeah, they didn't want to be doing that. And so what we did was this process of radical listening. We asked them, if you all, what would you like as a thank you from the world's community so that you could protect these rainforests? What are the solutions that you see that need to happen? They said healthcare access and alternative agriculture, like organic farming. Hmm. We did those things. 10 years later, 90% drop in logging households stabilization of the loss of primary forest, 52,000 acres of rainforest growing back. Stop. Um, and the, we invested $5 million over 10 years when that included even building a $2 million health uh, medical facility. The communities gave back just in the primary forest $65 million worth of carbon. That doesn't count the biodiversity effects that doesn't count the water cycling effects it doesn't count the beauty it doesn't count the spiritual value of those forests oh my goodness 
Um, where did you grow up? I grew up in northern New Mexico, in a little town of about a thousand people. Okay. And where'd you go to high school? I went to Taos High School. How do you find Reed? Yeah. <laughs> From Taos well, High School. So it's interesting because we didn't really have like guidance counseling or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't believe I ever met with a guy. Newfangled counselor. guidance counselors. <laughs> Uh, but some of my friends had gone, uh, like the class above me, uh, a couple of people I knew had, had come to read. And oh. so, so then I was like, oh. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a broad education. And that's what I got. I mean, I, I'm very pleased with the education I got. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it really taught me to think in a systems manner in a way that um, many of the people that I've known throughout my life don't think, mm -hmm. but other readies I know do, so. Explain this to a novice, systems thinking versus someone who's not a systems thinker. Basically understanding that all kinds of systems are interrelated, right? So. And history is incredibly important for how we got to where we are, mm -hmm. right? If you think back on, um, on some of the things, one or two things on Reed, you have found that you've consistently applied and either you're, when you went to graduate school or in your career, what are, what are, thing, what, what's one or, what are one, one or two things you can reflect on? So, I mean, I, I think that the big, this is a theme that went through every single class I took which was um, like looking at the root causes, not just accepting knowledge as here's knowledge, but where did this knowledge come from? Is it correct? Why do we think in this way, right? Like that's, there wasn't a single class I read where we didn't do that. And I think that's unusual. I've often said that one of the things that is unique about Reedy's is that, um, you know, their curriculums that are, are sort of, um, you know, you can kind of put it together, create what you want. And the read education is actually quite foundational, um, that you understand how things are put together, because in order to innovate and do something different, you need to know how it's constructed. Mm -hmm. would, would you agree? Yes, absolutely. And like the fact that we all took you one done, right? Like mm -hmm. still these things inform the way I look at the world every day. Mm -hmm. And I, I get frustrated when young people I know say they want to just, you know, do some kind of very, you know, narrow path. Right. And I always just feel like you, know, you got to learn when you're in college, you got to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to spread can. that net wide. I think your job in college is to get as broad an education as you possibly can, mm -hmm. to be exposed to as many different ideas as you possibly can. And read is structured in many ways to make that easier than it is at many places. And I highly recommend it. You will be an out-of-the-box thinker, which is essential because there are no boxes. Tell me a little bit about this book that you've written. My book is coming out in September. It's called Guardians of the Trees. So it's a memoir, but it's really just using um, my own journey of personal healing and global healing to talk about what's really happening on our planet and to have, talk about all these systems and to use that as a mechanism for um, really trying to drive home this point that um, it is indigenous and traditional communities who know the solutions mm -hmm. for our future on this planet and that there's hope because there are these incredible models that, can, that work dramatically well and that they can happen quickly, right? So like, it isn't, 
we shouldn't be giving up yeah. that there and that knowing that and knowing that it's like win, 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 right? You mm-hmm. have people are healthier and happier. The planet is healthier and happier. Rainforest is thriving, you know, that this is, it's good for as many indigenous communities say for all our relations 